Hello, Paolo and Luca. Uh, welcome to uh, our new uh, video podcast on uh, soft magnetic composite. Uh, well, would, would you like to, to start introducing yourself, uh, Paolo? Right. Uh, hi, Peter. Thanks for your invitation. My name is Paolo Bolognesi and uh, I am with the University of Pisa. Uh, Department of Energy Systems, um, Territory and Construction Engineering. Uh, I work in the field of electric machines, power electronics and electrical drives. Uh, I've been involved in these topics uh, since many years now, um, both from the point of view of teaching and also from the point of view of research and uh, also applied research in collaboration with uh, companies. In this case, Winst Syntex, so thanks for your invitation. Um, well, I'm very much interested in new materials and uh, new topologies of machines. So this um, talk, uh, the, the, this uh, discussion we are going to have about SMC for me is uh, actually very interesting. Thank you. And also welcome to you, Luca. Hi, hi, Peter. Thanks for the invitation. And uh, myself, uh, I relate to what Paolo said. Uh, I, I work in the same department. Um, I've been uh, I've been working in in the UK for many years, uh, and then uh, after a while I came back uh, here in Italy, working at the university, focusing on electrical machines mainly and manufacturing and multi physics design of uh, electrical machine for transportation, for uh, renewable energy, and uh, for uh, for industry application. Yeah, thank you, and uh, I myself I'm Peter Kelstein. I'm uh, working with innovation and marketing at uh, Sensex uh, in, in Denmark, where we are uh, producing soft magnetic composite materials uh, and, and would like to find application and investigate uh, new areas for uh, wh where SMC can be used. Um, there we are. Uh, the, the agenda for today would be yeah, introduction, who are we? Then an introduction to what is SMC, what are typical properties for SMC, then a discussion on the supply chain in the electrical motor market, and a discussion on SMC as a state of material. Uh, does it work? What benefits can it give? And, and, and so on. Uh, but, but first, uh, a short introduction to what is SMC. Uh, SMC is a powder-based material. Uh, Every single powder particle is isolated. So it, it's like laminated sheet that is isolated on, on each side. But here, uh, every particle is isolated. And typical particle size is around 100 micron. Uh, those particles are then compacted into a, uh, a part that is called a green part. And the green part is afterwards heat treated. Uh, to have the final properties both uh, mechanically and uh, magnetically. Uh, afterwards, it can also be surface coated to have uh, corrosion protection and so on. Uh, typical, typical properties uh, of, of SMC, if we look at uh, down here, uh, the, the saturation level, uh, we can typically reach the same saturation levels as you, as you can with uh, with iron. So uh, around two Tesla is uh, is reachable. Uh, then when we go into motors or, or uh, frequency applications, uh, we see some loss curves as a function of frequency. And if we look at the, the DC level where we have no frequency, typical SMC has a low uh, a higher uh, loss uh, because the heat treatment uh, that we make after compaction uh, does not fully anneal, so we still have some uh, deformation, uh, hardening deformation left over in, in the part. Uh, if we went to fully annealing, we would also initiate a centering. And, and the centering would shortcut the particles and, uh, and destroy the isolation. So therefore, we we have in SMC a trade-off: uh, how high can you go in temperature to have a, a, a better annealing, 
but not too high to, to destroy the isolation layer. So therefore, we typically see a, a higher loss at low frequency compared to, to other materials. But when frequency goes up, uh, we can also see that uh, the losses, they are not uh, uh, growing that much. Uh, so therefore, we often claim that SMC uh, is a, an advantage uh, material when we have a higher frequency in, in our machines. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any comments uh, to, to the manufacturing process on the, uh, the properties you see here? Uh, well, let's say it's, it's very interesting from one point of view to see how uh, effective it can be the insulation that you mentioned. Indeed, uh, looking at the properties uh, on, on the left for material H1, we can see that uh, as in the graph, uh, we have uh, reported the losses per cycle Indeed, the, um, so the energy lost in each cycle, uh, it's it's practically constant with frequency, at least in the range that uh, is uh, analyzed here, which means that actually the insulation between the particles is very much effective because in practice we only see hysteresis losses there. And um, when you go for a different material, the M7, then you can see lower hysteresis losses, which are the ones that you can see at the beginning of the scale, basically. Um, which sum up with, uh, um, let's say, increasing uh, uh, eddy current losses. And there is uh, the, exactly the effect of the process you described. So uh, you have a somewhat uh, less effective insulation between the particles. So you have increasing um, eddy current losses, but uh, you got better uh, annealing, which means uh, lower hysteresis losses. So it's, it's a matter of a, a trade-off. So uh, depending on the operational frequency that you, you are going to, to envision in your application, you can find more interesting going for, uh, let's say, uh, towards a um, less insulated material, but with lower hysteresis losses like the M7, rather than uh, uh, for, for a material which is better insulated, but with higher hysteresis losses uh, like the H1. Uh, only one comment about the laminations. Uh, Typically, for higher frequency, you would go for thinner laminations. So here you have the losses for 0.5 and 0.65, but mm. indeed those uh, thickness uh, uh, values would be not so much suited for applications uh, going above, let's say, 1 kilohertz or so. Normally, you yeah. would go for 0.35 or something like that. Yeah. And in such case, you would have uh, lower losses, obviously, for, for eddy currents because uh, the thinner is the lamination and the, and the lower you, uh, you get uh, in terms of losses for the currents for the same level of uh, flux density and so on. Yeah, so typical thickness is 0.35 in, in industrial applications today. Indeed. Yeah. In automotive, uh, they go even thinner, don't they? It depends on, on the, just on the frequency and on the target that you have in terms of uh, losses. Um, if you go uh, very, very thin, you can even have uh, okay applications in which uh, you go below 0.1, but those are indeed tapes rather than laminations because they become obviously very much flexible. Then you need uh, something to put them together and to, to keep them in the right shape because yeah. otherwise you will have, you will have something uh, yeah. just resembling uh, Mm. Uh, paper sheets or something like that. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah. for, for the other properties, I would say, okay, it's interesting to see that we can come to flux density values, uh, which are pretty high, mm. but on the other hand, you need a pretty high value of um, field strength also to achieve that level of flux density. So you have to keep this into account in the design of your machine. Typically, the the, the uh, the permeability, and we can see that very well. I see in the in that uh, diagram. Okay, it's very interesting. As you can see, that the the differential permeability actually goes down uh, uh, pretty quickly. And so, uh, wh when you go uh, above, uh, let's say, 1.5, and you approach two as a level of flux density to Tesla's, uh, you, you can see the level of permeability going going down very quickly. 
yeah. and uh, you, you are you are basically in the order of uh, 100 or less tending to maybe i don't know 10 or maybe even less mm. and uh, obviously this has to be kept uh, into account very carefully when you design the machine so mm. let's say these materials are very interesting from some point of view um, but on the other hand they do require a design process which is uh, uh, more suited, more tailored for the properties. And uh, so you need to understand very well how the machine operates uh, and even to envision how to exploit at best the properties of these materials. I'd like to mention about this, the 3D capability. In yeah. my opinion, it's, it's a very powerful lever. So mm. in the case you, you, you are able to envision a structure of the machine, which is capable to, to let's say, uh, to, to, to pivot on that in such a way to uh, exploit it uh, uh, actually that could be very much interesting yeah. because you can go you could go to, to to towards machines which cannot be done with laminations so mm. then they cannot be made using laminations so yeah. it's a completely new field of applications that you can that you can envision yeah yeah I, uh, I I'm, I'm jumping to the next uh, slide, um, because you, you just uh, said uh, this with design possibilities. Uh, we have made a, a, a simulation on uh, a new design, and uh, this is not very complex design uh, compared to what you can do with SMC topologies. But uh, if we look at the, the motor design at, at the bottom, this is a standard uh laminated motor where the the winding uh, of copper has an overhang uh but on the upper uh, we have designed it with smc material and there we have re reduced the height of the bridge uh, in the uh in the teeth enabling us to make the winding uh within the height of the stator itself. So there's no uh, overhang, there's no uh, end windings. Uh, in, in this case, we were able to reduce the amount of, uh, of winding with 30%. Uh, and, and that itself, when it's copper, it's, uh, it's a lot of money, but it's also uh, a, a quite high reduction in losses. Because in many motors, uh, the majority of losses are copper losses, it's not iron losses. Uh, so just by reducing the, the length of copper with 30%, you have, can reduce the losses with 30%. But you can also reduce weight a lot. And, and in this case, we, we try to, to simulate uh, on, on the weight. And, uh, and you can see in the table, uh, when, when going uh, from copper to copper, uh, just changing the design, we can reduce the weight from 412 to 310 grams uh, for the stator. Uh, if we change that to aluminium uh, for, for the winding, uh, for uh, reducing uh, weight even further, uh, the, the weight of the, uh, the SMC component combined with the aluminium uh, could be reduced even further down to 250 grams. Um, do, do you have any uh, comments on, on this design? Uh, Luca, maybe you uh, you have some, some input. Uh, why is this uh, smart or, or why is it not possible? Uh, what are the obstacles? Uh, what, what, have, what have you done here? <laughs> Uh, thanks, Peter. No, uh, you know, it's uh, very interesting uh, to explore the capabilities of SMC, in fact, to, you know, introduce the 3D elements to change the flux path and therefore, you know, achieve possible uh, significant improvements. Uh, obviously, uh, depends on the application, so the, the, the game of changing uh, the aluminium and copper, uh, aluminium with yeah, aluminium with copper uh, or vice versa, and SMC with lamination depends on the specific applications. There are advantages uh, definitely in going to aluminium from what concerns the, 
the weight perspective uh, is not uh, it depends really on the application whether uh, you you gain something in terms of performances uh, uh, looking at the, the losses for example as you were mentioning uh, but definitely there are many many interesting uh, possibility here to let's say uh, become more resilient by means of having a better uh, way or a most uh, uh, mo let's say various capabilities of producing uh, structures uh, from different uh, type of materials also because the availability of those materials in the market is uh, much much very volatile as, as well as the price so uh, it's very good that you keep exploring uh, for what concerns the capabilities that we have definitely the unwindings is a major uh, uh, major source of losses uh, uh, as well as the winding itself and therefore uh, and going to reduce that key element of the of the structure is, uh, is is very important and i guess that somehow the structure is also built uh, to to easy manufacturing i would say so and that could be actually an a, a additional feature that you can have on on, on using uh, the technology of smc mm -hmm. to create modular structures in such a way yeah. that uh, allows mm -hmm. a better uh, maintenance as well yeah, uh, there, there are some people who has asked me, but uh, this design that cannot be used on all motors, and uh, that is fully right. Uh, the the motor we have calculated on here has a, a ferrite uh, rotor, and as it is ferrite, the saturation level in the teeth is not very high. So, so this had a, I. I I think I remember it was around 0.5 Tesla. Uh, so therefore, it, it was possible to reduce the height of the teeth where where the winding is. But but for some motors, uh, it has been fully uh, used the, the the saturation level. So if if saturation level already is uh, 1.7 or 1.8, you cannot make this trick. Uh, so it is a niche, uh, and it is for, uh, I, I would say, mainly for uh, medium or low-cost motors. It's not for high-end motors, and uh, that's also why we, in this case, we have been calculating on on, on weight reduction instead of performance, uh, uh, because we, we're looking at the, the areas where uh, SMC can make a difference. Well, I, I would say, Peter, that uh, in the end, uh, one uh, must be aware that it is uh, a material having different properties. I mean, even if the um, raw material from which the particles are taken is basically the same or can be even the same, the macroscopic properties of the SMC as a, a composite material are indeed different. And therefore, this means that you can actually design optimized machines uh, when you keep properly into account the different properties. So if you just take an optimized machine designed for laminations and use um, just uh, replace the, the um, animation core with an SMC core, uh, basically, you're not going to obtain the same uh, um, characteristics. I mean, from some point of, of view, uh, the situation can be improved, but from other points of view, it, should, it is much likely to be uh, on the opposite, uh, to, to become worse. Mm -hmm. So, in particular, the, the point that you mentioned before is quite critical. If you yep. consider um, uh, a machine properly designed for optimizing the use of uh, each part, most probably, if the basic material was uh, silicon iron laminations, then the flux density would have been um, taken to proper values. So um, for sure, uh, higher than, uh, let's say, one Tesla or something like that. Mm. And therefore, um, carrying out the operation that you, you, you showed here would lead to values of flux density in the teeth uh, core, which could uh, require uh, um, field strength values much higher and therefore mm. the whole design of the machine will be perturbated most probably making it not so much effective anymore and therefore uh, it's just a matter of um, uh, designing in my opinion the machine from the beginning keeping into account the peculiar properties of the material when you do that then you can um, tailor the design 
according to the properties and then you can take the maximum advantage. So in case you want to carry out, let's say, a full comparison one to one, uh, probably the, the most appropriate approach would be just to to, to give uh, to two different uh, guys, one expert in laminations maybe, and the other one expert in uh, SMC, the task to design the machine having the same, uh, let's say, overall capability, okay, torque, speed, uh, maybe voltage and so on, and uh, then you see the outcome from both of them and you do compare uh, as, as a, a, an overall device in case you want to uh, carry out a comparison like that, because uh, if you just focus on the single parts of it, uh, it can be a bit misleading. Uh, just replacing one to one is not the best move because the properties are different. And this yeah. stands also when you compare aluminum and copper uh, because they are different. And therefore, mm -hmm. you cannot just, uh, in my opinion, you cannot just uh, focus on, on the single part of the machine. The machine is a whole. In the end, yeah. most probably you will be interested in the properties of the whole. And therefore, uh, it's a matter of combination. Okay, so for example, you say, okay, uh, I do have a design for the machine with the copper um, winding. I simply replace the copper with aluminum. What is going to happen? Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, what is going to happen? Um, well, it's going to happen that you obtain for the very same um, geometry, you obtain a resistance which is higher, and you obtain a weight which is lower because mm -hmm. the volume is the same and the number of yeah. turns and so on. And, yeah. and so the, 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 you will have a machine having different uh, characteristics. In the end, the, the machine will be um, lighter, but the uh, winding losses will be uh, higher. Mm. Is that fine for your application? Probably, maybe, I don't know, yes, no, depends on what is most important to you. Yeah. In case you want to, to use aluminum in spite of copper, pro most probably you will have to redesign the machine. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, for example, for going for the same losses, you will need more room for the aluminum winding because you will need to increase uh, the cross-section yeah, yeah. of the yeah, wire. The thickness of the wire. Uh, yeah. That most mm -hmm. probably will not lead to uh, a higher weight of the winding, but uh, maybe you will need a larger um, magnetic structure, okay, and mm -hmm. so as you uh, build up with the same material, maybe laminations, yeah. you will have an increase in the weight of the of the uh, iron core. So mm -hmm. it, it's a matter of designing the hole in the end, uh, because you, you cannot separate yeah. the different components. No. Yeah, I, uh, Peter, I understand that. Yeah. Peter, I have a question for you, actually. Uh, yes. Let's say, looking from the other perspective, uh, let's say how much room there is from the manufacturing process, so from material perspective of in tailoring the properties of the material that you that you achieve. Let's yeah. say you give us some characteristics, okay, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. what uh, from a designer perspective you mm -hmm. you give me. I consider this as an input, okay. But uh, then uh, we, how how much room there is to work the other way around? Where as a designer of electrical machine, I give you mm -hmm. an input. To you, material yep. manufacturer, to give yeah. okay, I would like this BH curve. How much room there is to achieve that? Yeah, uh, th there is some room. Uh, the the core of the material is, is iron, so so the saturation level is iron kind. Uh, then we can press it to a higher density, uh, reaching uh, uh, the highest possible uh, saturation level. So so on on saturation level, it's kind of locked by uh, iron. Uh, but in the process, uh, what we can do is that we can uh, uh, take different powder sizes. So if you have a, a coarser powder, uh, you will have uh, different properties than if you have a finer powder. Uh, then we can also heat treat it uh, differently. So in, in the heat treatment process, we can uh, enhance the thickness of the isolation, so making that stronger. Uh, and we can definitely also uh, change the mechanical properties uh, because especially uh, the, uh, uh, for, for, for many motors, there are uh, mechanical, uh, uh, every time the, uh, the magnet parses, there'll be some pulling 
uh, and uh, it goes on millions of times. Uh, and it's not at 20 degrees. Many motors are running at 80, 90 degrees. Uh, so, yeah. so therefore, we also need uh, the mechanical strength at the working temperature and, and not only measure at 20. Uh, and, and then on the uh, heat treatment, we also look at uh, how can we increase temperature uh, in order to uh, anneal it even further uh, without making the shortcut uh, or breaking down the isolation layer. So, so continuously within the SMC world, we are uh, trying to develop and push the limit a little further to reduce the losses uh, and, and to increase the mechanical properties without selling out the uh, uh, the magnetic properties. So it's, but it's always a trade-off. Um, but, uh, but there are today, I would say 10, 12, different uh, materials within the world of SMC. So if you have a, an application where you need uh, or, or where we, you would like uh, the SMC to be in over here, you, you would like it to be designed towards these properties, uh, then we can do it. We had a customer where they needed a specific uh, uh, resistance of the material. So therefore, we designed our heat treatment process to reach that window of resistivity. Okay. So, so we can design uh, the material properties quite well to what you need. Okay. I also have a question about this. What about the raw materials? I mean, you just use pure iron or even uh, silicon iron steel uh, or even maybe alloys like um, iron cobalt or... No, are... it's, uh, it, it is quite pure iron, so so no alloying elements are added. Uh, it also makes uh, it uh, price-wise and and supply chain-wise quite stable. Uh, if if we added cobalt, it would also be an issue uh, with the supply chain. Uh, this, so so therefore we uh, we think that. The material is, uh, is is very stable uh, and and very easy to, uh, to to manufacture and to get. Um, and and we also and and now I need some help from you because uh, we have read uh, several reports about uh, uh, shortages within the world of lamination. Um, and and we think that. Okay, this could be an opening for for SMC to to enter the market uh, within Motor World, but uh, how how does that look? This shortage from your perspective is, is it a, a worldwide problem or is it uh, very localized in few areas? Uh, just let's say that uh, from what me and Paolo we know more or less, uh, the the situation is uh, is that. Uh, most of these electrical steel are nowadays manufactured in China, in Japan, uh, in Korea. So mm -hmm. all the all the supply coming from Asia. Uh, this obviously makes the market not much uh, stable and resilient because you're relying on an external supplier. And therefore, you know, like in, in a globalized world where uh, political instabilities uh, really make make uh, big difference in price changes. Uh, it's very difficult to 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 predict, but definitely there is gonna be. I mean, definitely. The perspective is that there's gonna be a shortage because if you see the electrification spike that we are seeing right now, this will be basically reflected in a uh, higher demand. Okay, from the car manufacturer, for example. But we are talking about in general, so the renewable energy and all the electrification appliances that we that we see nowadays spreading around our communities uh, in Europe, especially, um, they, they're going to require these type of materials. And, uh, and uh, let's say that uh, on one side, uh, these, uh, see, 
the, the companies are mostly in China. And the point is that from a global perspective, there are not many companies. Okay, it's not a market of very big, very uh, huge amount of competitors. There are like 15 to 20 companies. And this makes uh, the thing very difficult in order for someone else to enter in the market, to, to, to step in and maybe bring some uh, breakthrough changes because there is higher investment costs. And, uh, and the market is somehow closed. There is a problem of patent protection, IP protection, and there's many, been many causes around uh, the world uh, concerning this, uh, these topics. So the situation is quite complex, but the, the, mm -hmm. the shortage can be an advantage for SMC in terms of the fact that uh, the, the, it's not about uh, the raw materials, it's about the electrical steel itself. Uh, there mm -hmm. might be that those companies are not able to cope with the increased demand, so they are not able to do the step change to fulfill the increased demand worldwide, and the remaining part that they are not able to be, to be, let's say, to supply these materials it can be somehow filled with SMC. So there's definitely room for for the technology to to step in, also to make resilience, to make the market, the overall market, much more resilient. You know, you diversify and therefore. Uh, you are able to to cope with different uh, different situations. Okay. I don't know if Paolo wants to add something. Yeah, maybe Peter, we were, you were going to to add some comments. Uh, uh, yes, uh, look, you, you said it was very localized in in Asia. Um, so the supplier would stuff, it, yeah. yeah, so so could it be a situation like we have seen with magnets that? Uh, uh, China have previously said that uh, the the problem with supply of magnets you have to handle it yourself. Hundred uh, percent. There is uh, problem with that, or the same as the semiconductor crisis that we had uh, last year. You know, it's gonna be something similar because all the supply chain and all the manufacturing is done in South Korea and or uh, let's say South Asia, and uh, and that's 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 uh, creating a problem. It is reflecting uh, like very much likely on the market. Not the end manufacturer, you know, there's yeah. been many million cars not being produced by the yeah, shortage exactly. of semiconductor last year, and yeah. this is gonna create like a big economical problem, not there, here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the problem is that yeah. you, you have a, a very much increased demand with a very steep trend, and uh, I mean, even the, the in terms of uh, capability of processing the materials, okay, for for providing laminations, you do have to to have large plants which require big investments, which are not so quick to be get ready, and yeah. you have a, a kind of situation which is uh, going to change abruptly from the point of view of the demand. And therefore, it's pretty obvious that uh, the capability of supply, of uh, keeping pace with that demand, will be um, put at, at a stronger stress condition. And therefore, I fully agree with Luca. There's room for uh, new solutions. The fact that you are mainly relying on pure iron makes it uh, a, a, a bit, uh, for sure, a bit uh, easier for you to be more... Um, uh, more fulfilled in terms of demand from your suppliers because mm -hmm. it's a, a let's say a somewhat parallel channel with respect to the silicon line on main strain mainstream and therefore uh, there's room in my opinion it's uh, just a matter of exploiting your at best properties because uh, uh, it's a different material for example you mentioned before the the matter of uh, resistance uh, you inter you meant uh, electrical resistivity but that's also the matter of mechanical resistance of the material because yep. in the end uh, an electric motor uh, is also a mechanical device mm. and that's the matter of thermal properties because uh, an electric motors obviously does have to be designed also to um, get rid properly of the losses inside and therefore from this point of view you you do have to design uh, keeping in mind the properties of the material because otherwise the design cannot be optimized obviously mm. and therefore from this point of view it's uh, quite important to Keep under control the fact that basically with respect to a lamination let's say with respect to a stack of laminations obviously an smc could be maybe somewhat weaker from a mechanical point of view and maybe somewhat less effective in terms of uh, heat conductivity properties and therefore uh, even in terms of uh, thermal inertia let's say it it would be probably um, lower and this could be probably a bit worse so in the end you do have the design keeping into account of the properties you yeah. can lever on uh, uh, let's say um, 
the aspects that make SMC superior, in particular the reduction of um, eddy current losses and the 3D properties. Okay, mm. the degree of freedom which is added up from the fact that uh, indeed it's like a 3D lamination, let's say, as you said in the beginning, yeah. which means that you can really, really design machines that cannot be done with laminations. But on the other hand, you have to keep into account the weak points. Uh, uh, as we said, the problem of the field strength that, that is reco required when you go uh, for uh, higher values of uh, flux density. So basically the lower uh, permeability that you uh, achieve when you go towards uh, values of uh, flux density, which are on the opposite, pretty normal for laminations. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the, the lower thermal conductivity, the lower mechanical resistance, even in terms of capability to deal with the relatively high temperatures. I mean, it's not a problem operating a, a, a silicon iron lamination at 300 degrees, maybe, because from a mechanical point of view, it's not so so much a problem. Most probably, it would be a problem with an SMC component, so you cannot do that. So high temperature machines probably um, uh, would be more difficult to be to be designed using SMC. But yeah. um, it's just I'm, a matter. Uh, I'm I'm not sure because the the heat treatment uh, to where we anneal it. It's done around five, six hundred degrees, so oh. the material can survive a quite high temperatures. Um, but but oh. I do not have any mechanical properties at three hundred degrees. Uh, so I, I have no data supporting. Uh, but uh, it's a matter just to understand if you can have a, yeah. because probably. I mean, it's not going to to burn out, okay? But probably it's going to become weaker from a mechanical point of view. So. Yeah. It's just a matter of keeping into account the properties and designing, yeah. keeping them in mind. It, it's just uh, as plain as that. Yeah. As as it always happens in, in engineering, I mean, it's, it's nothing special. You do the same uh, always. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I I have a a, a question uh, because uh, we, when we talked about this uh, with aluminium. Uh, you also said, uh, yeah, you have to take in in mind that, uh, that there might be some difference in resistivity of uh, the winding. Um, but uh, I, I've been looking historically. Uh, there has been a few occasions uh, where aluminium suddenly came up because copper exploded in price, but then it disappeared again. But do, are, are you aware? If there are any uh, applications that has been uh, on a stable level, uh, been been made with aluminium wires. Uh. Well, if you think in general, you yeah. can see um, examples which uh, um, in which uh, the the choice for aluminium was done permanently. And uh, it, it's not in electrical machines, but if you think about overhead uh, lines, so power lines, then mm. it's quite common to, to use yeah. aluminum instead of copper. And yeah. it's just because for that application, um, keeping into account different properties, well, the benefits were more than the drawbacks in using the aluminum. Mm. So uh, it, that's a, a, a clear example. So it's just a matter of uh, uh, what is most important and so what is the best balance of, uh, that you can achieve. So in, in electrical machines, uh, yes, uh, you, you, you find in the market manufacturers of uh, uh, magnetic wire just for, for, uh, for application in electric machines, uh, which are made out of aluminum. So yes, yeah. you can do that. For example, another application that uh, has been used for, my, for, for a relatively long time, it's in the secondary windings of uh, large power distribution transformers. There you can find aluminum um, windings, basically, mm -hmm. because again, it was found that for that application, it was a better trade-off. So mm -hmm. it's just a matter of, uh, uh, let's say, weighting the different aspects and coming yeah. up with an overall figure uh, which can uh, ex uh, express, let's say, the mm -hmm. level uh, achieved from a specific design, the um, level of uh, fulfillment with respect to the requirements or goals of your design, mm -hmm. and then uh, each solution in the end. So, um, yes, aluminum uh, is an alternative. It's not so much diffused, uh, 
but if you look uh, there are application for example another application which comes to my mind is obviously the the squealer cage in induction uh, motors in small induction motors in in most uh, small and medium sized induction motors they do have uh, um, the squealer cage made out of uh, aluminum uh, mm. Both for reasons of uh, let's say economy, so it's uh, it's cheaper, and yep. for manufacturing reasons because it's easier to 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 just uh, cast it uh, in uh, in the classical way. So you just mm. squeeze aluminium within the, the, the laminations and mm. it's done. Uh, yeah. It's a very effective, quick, uh, and so in the end uh, uh, economical and um, and good <laughs> let's say mm. process. Yeah. Uh, better than with copper because uh, copper it's uh, far more difficult to be pressed uh, that way because of viscosity because higher temperatures and so on and so it depends on the application in the end mm. so you can definitely envision the possibility to use uh, aluminum um, wires it's just a matter of tailoring the design and uh, looking at the final outcome and mm. uh, considering the different aspects uh, de deciding if it is better or worse than uh, a well done design using copper in the end. Yeah, also because of the higher resistivity can be tailored in many different ways. I mean, you definitely have an higher loss density within your machines, but it also depends on the type of cooling you are envisioning. So uh, if, uh, if, because nowadays there are, uh, there has been studied many uh, ways of cool electrical machines, which are very aggressive. You know, you go actually and close to the, the hot spot to remove the heat. And when the application allow the capability of using oil, water to actually go very close to the hotspot, also the adoption of uh, aluminium can be uh, an opportunity to explore something uh, that manufacturer becomes lighter, for example, while losing a bit in efficiency. It, as the professor said, it really depends on the application, but yeah. there's room for, uh, for play. Yeah, so in, in applications like Aeroplanes, uh, uh, new electrical cars where weight is a big issue. Uh, Aut the, the, automotive industry, let's say, yeah, transporting yeah. people and transporting goods, it's becoming yeah. more like ships application, and maybe one day they will become big and they will have, uh, you know, there's many rooms, there's many different type of uh, application mm -hmm. that are nowadays coming uh, coming out with this electrification world, and therefore uh, there is there's room for. Yeah. For diversification as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, now we have been talking about uh, yeah, the material and discussing of uh, some uh, more or less a standard design of a of a topology uh, of, of uh, electrical motors. But there are also some more uh, fantastic or, or different or new designs. Uh, you mentioned that uh, with SMC and the powder technology, we can make uh, structures that are impossible to make with uh, laminations. Um, can can you introduce some of those new designs? Uh, why are they made? What are their uh, benefits? Uh, I, I'm not that strong. Uh, I, I know some of the words, axial flux machine. Uh, it, it sounds great, but uh, I'm not an expert in, in, in motors. So, so can, can you help me a little out? What, uh, what is the benefits yeah. of those new designs or what are, and, and what are the disadvantages? Well, let's say, let, let's begin with axial flux machine. I would say, okay, it's, first of all, it's, it's uh, we say now, uh, unconventional or even new design but indeed if we go back in history we could see that uh, some of the very first examples of electric machines were indeed the axial flux so <laughs> a bit okay. surprising but uh, so yeah, going really. back 100 years or so yeah, yeah. let's say in the okay. beginning in the mind yeah. of our uh, predecessors indeed yeah. uh, the axial flux concept was not so strange no, uh -huh. They tried that, but but what made the difference was just the introduction of the concept of laminations. Indeed, they found that they could design better machines when they could exploit uh, planar laminations, and that was a big push towards uh, the change from axial to radial flux uh -huh. machines. Uh, the problem is that if you think about an axial flux machine, typically you will have a structure which features uh, um, a shape 
that uh, basically cannot be made out with planar uh, laminations. Uh, just because of the shape. In the end, you have uh, the part of the main flux lines flowing just uh, parallel to the rotation axis of the machine. And this means that the, the shape of the course must some way be put, let's say, let me show with my hands if I yeah. can try. Yeah. You can have to put the two parts on the sides of those portions which just will flow parallel to the axis of the machine. And this means that uh, you cannot do that by simply assembling planar laminations. You could do that theoretically in case you had laminations which uh, have not, uh, uh, let's say, uniform thickness, but we have uh, a shape like, let's say, wedges or something like that. So you could, you should, uh, let's say, cut uh, your your uh, iron core in a radial uh, with, uh, using radial planes, let's say, okay. and therefore you would have uh, wedge-shaped uh, laminations. But this clearly is uh, pretty difficult to be done, and indeed it's practically not proposed. Therefore, in case you want to build up something like that, uh, using something that uh, resembles laminations, just because you want to reduce the eddy current losses, what you can do at most is just using uh, tapes. We mentioned tapes before, which are uh, laminations very thin, and therefore you can just roll up, okay, a tape of that, and then you can cut the slots within the body. It's something okay. that is not easy to be done, obviously. Mm -hmm. And therefore, okay, you can uh, use uh, uh, specific uh, types of uh, approaches for um, creating those slots. Uh, for example, you can use um, HDM uh, processes or something like that, but it's something that is expensive and slow, and so it's not much used, uh, useful for, for uh, large-scale production. You can build up prototypes, you can build up uh, niche machines for special applications in which uh, the cost is not uh, a major problem, but if you think about uh, mass production, it's, that, that's not uh, the best solution. And uh, if you think about using uh, SMC for creating those cores, obviously it's not a problem in the sense that uh, uh, just due to the intrinsic 3D um, uh, capabilities, it's not a major problem. It's just a matter of, uh, uh, let's say, splitting eventually the core into more uh, smaller parts, uh, which can be manufactured easily, and then assemble those smaller parts. This concept, by the way, the, the, the modular decomposition of the uh, magnetic core is very much interesting from several points of view, because uh, not only it permits to create uh, larger cores which could not be just manufactured as a single piece, but it permits also to uh, make easier the assembly process of the machine, because you can think about, uh, uh, let's say, subparts which can be more easily uh, created, um, maybe equipped with windings and so on, and those uh, subparts can be then assembled using any kind of, uh, let's say, composition method like Lego, maybe, or something like that. And uh, this is a very much interesting perspective, uh, in my opinion, a way to, let's say, just uh, exploit the best the properties, the inner properties of uh, SMC, uh, something that which cannot be so easily done using uh, laminations. So it's it's something that can be very much interesting also from the point of view of uh, uh, maintenance, for example, to permitting more easily to disassemble the machine, for repairing, for even at the end of the life, uh, recycling the materials. This is a very interesting aspect to be considering nowadays because, uh, uh, you know, we have a big problem with uh, the footprint of uh, uh, industrial uh, products uh, with respect to the environment. And so going towards the perspective of uh, recycling as much as possible is uh, very much important. And from that point of view, having a modular design can permit uh, not only to to carry out more, um, more easily and therefore more affordably also repairing, hmm? but also disassembling at the end uh, of the life of the machine and recycling the parts. And therefore, it's something that can be really interesting as a benefit of SMC. So, yes, definitely. And from the point of view of other topologies, not only considering axial uh, flux machines, well, uh, let's say, making available the third dimension, let's say, which is not available in standard lamination-based uh, 
uh, machines design indeed opens up uh, a wide range of opportunities. You can think about, uh, let's say, machines that can have uh, um, strange shapes, uh, for example, uh, transfer flux machines, which are more easily uh, manufactured using um, materials that can be shaped um, without uh, mining about planes because it's uh, no more necessary. Okay, mm. you can think about uh, um, uh, specific um, types of vernier machines. Uh, you can think about exploiting more the the, the, the parts related to the and windings, you can think about, uh, let's say, not radial, not axial, but let's say obliqual oriented <laughs> machines with conical shapes. That's a huge, that, that, that's a really huge, uh, that's a, a really a new world of opportunities that opens up just because um, you, you can exploit the third dimension, let's say, and uh, you can do that with far less constraints that a normal lamination based design uh, makes possible. So it's a um, really, really uh, interesting uh, set of opportunities that opens up. Um, so, so thanks the benefits, to the of uh, yeah, The benefits you can get out of that is it uh, something like high torque, low speed, so you can avoid having gears in your construction, can, so you can go direct uh, drive. Is, is that some of the benefits you, you can oh. find here? Well, let's say again, it depends on on the overall uh, uh, design that you can uh, that, that you can uh, envision. In the end, uh, if you just look at what is the flux density that, that you can achieve in your main air gap, uh, let's say uh, if you just uh, go for that, uh, obviously it will be in practice in practice uh, um, lower than with laminations. If you consider good laminations, okay, you can achieve mm -hmm. higher level of flux density, and therefore. Basically, you could think about having higher uh, torque density values and so on, but uh, there are many other opportunities, for example, for high speed machines where normally you don't push so much on the flux density, you rather push on speed and therefore on frequency. And there we come to, to the conclusions that uh, uh, we mentioned before about uh, the possibility to push on frequency. Okay, that, that's a very good opportunity to, mm. to compensate. So let's say uh, it's just a matter of uh, exploiting about the, the properties and uh, SMC can be useful in very different uh, types of applications. So Sorry, I would like to open up also another opportunity that uh, the 3D technology can uh, can push out, you know, in the world of technology, which is, uh, let's say, combinations. Let's say that uh, usually if you think nowadays you will have uh, the electrical machine which drive the, the, the your application, you know, drive the fan, drive the thing and so on. Well, and this is done mainly because uh, you, you, the two things have different features, different structure, different characteristics, and therefore it's difficult to, to think about putting in one place. Well, uh, with the 3D technology, so losing the constraint of using laminations, so being constrained to the geometry that you can create with the laminations, well, it opened up to the concept of the fact that uh, a fan can become something uh, very strange, possibly completely integrated, or a pump itself can become uh, where the rotor uh, become itself part of the machine itself. So you you just having two instead of two components, you have them string together in the same uh -huh. object. Yeah, definitely. Mm. There are already examples of these uh, in, uh, for example, just uh, small pumps uh, um, which are uh, built up using. Um, uh, plastic uh, magnets, let's say, and mm -hmm. the concept is the same. You, you can eventually use the same basic material, same basic plastic material. At some positions within the device, you can add up uh, um, powder of the proper material. In that case, magnets, in your case, uh, just iron, to achieve the electrical, electromagnetic properties that it, you desire. And in other parts, the very same uh, uh, plastic um, uh, basic uh, material can be used uh, to create, uh, for example, just rotors of pumps or whatever. So it's something that can be um, effectively done. It's already done in small ap applications because it, in the end, it is it is very cheap. I mean, basically, you can properly uh, combine the two process manufacturing processes, and in the end, uh, you obtain one single piece which carries out, uh, carries out uh, 
both of the tasks, both the mm. magnetic task and uh, a mechanical task yeah. related to the application. Mm. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Plus, there is another capability that uh, SMC has. Uh, uh, I might repeat something that we already said, but is uh, kind of uh, interesting to focus right now. Like uh, you know, if you if if you consider as a painter, you know that uh, uh, add small bits of color in different parts of the of its uh, frame to in order to achieve the result. You can do the same with SMC, whereas uh, you can tailor the properties of the material, the distribution of the properties of the material according to what you desire. You know, and this is something that with lamination is quite a difficult task to achieve. Okay, mm -hmm. to localize uh, properties in a specific region of the part. You know, as, as you know, you you just want this piece because from the technological perspective, from the designer perspective, it's important to have such capabilities. Uh, with lamination, is uh, not that difficult. Whereas with SMC, you can actually distribute the properties. Uh, according to the design. So this makes the design much more difficult. So it's much more complicated for us as so to say, but the outcome can be something uh, interesting. Absolutely, absolutely. If, just uh, taking the example mentioned by Luca, it, for example, if you think about uh, um, a modern Simpsons reluctance uh, machine, typically you have those rotors with uh, flux barriers, okay, laminations which are manufactured in a very careful way with very tiny bridges and so on. But basically, in the end, what you're doing is taking a lamination which has uh, uniform properties from a magnetic point of view, and then you cut some parts and there you have air basically or something which is not ferromagnetic in spite of the of the iron. And therefore you have a, an abrupt change in the magnetic properties. Either you have the properties of the silicon steel or you do have the properties of air, basically, of vacuum. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think about what, uh, what um, Luca was mentioning, um, in the process with uh, powder, you can think, for example, changing the density of the powder in different positions, but not in a stepwise way, just uh, in a smooth way. So you could uh, actually uh, have a full scale of uh, variation of the properties of the material rather than, than a stepwise change. And that could open up again a broad range of possible design variants. Uh, so you, you can really have much more degrees of freedom that presently you can envision using laminations. So again, mm -hmm. exploiting properly the, the, the inherent characteristics of these uh, um, composite materials, because in the end it's a composite material, uh, could be very much interesting. Obviously, you do need, uh, uh, okay, uh, manufacturers which are capable to do that. So manufacturing yeah. processes. Oh. Uh, yeah, I am, I'm put on a task now. <laughs> Indeed, it's, it's a challenge for you, but I think it's also a very huge, interesting, hugely interesting pro opportunity for you. So mm -hmm. as, as uh, SMC manufacturers, I think you could, uh, uh, okay, take the challenge and try to to, to become able to provide the products with that kind of uh, flexibility. Obviously, that would be somewhat custom made uh, unavoidably, but in, in case you could be able to do that, I think that, uh, okay, uh, really new perspectives could open up in the design of electric machines. Thank you very much. I am uh, fully loaded. I have learned so much today. Uh, so I I don't think I I'm up here uh, with with news. Uh, so Paolo and look, I I am extremely thank you thankful for uh, for your help and uh, and to to sort out some of the questions and <laughs> in the world of of SMC and and motors. I I hope that you also enjoyed it. Absolutely. Thanks for the invitation. It was a pleasure to talk to you and uh, to have the opportunity to exchange ideas. Uh, it's always uh, nice from our perspective to have the opportunity to discuss uh, with um, with the industry about uh, new perspectives. Exactly. New opportunities, yeah. uh, new ways to exploit uh, materials uh, for, for uh, designing better machines. And so in the end, for providing our small contribution to the improvement of the general uh, applications and in the end of our uh, of our world because in the end uh, nowadays especially we don't know what 
could be the impact of the electrification. So our responsibility of, uh, as academics working uh, in electrical engineering field uh, is even higher than before. We were already aware of the importance of electrical engineering in, in, in the modern world, but nowadays it's uh, even more evident for even more people. So the responsibility is even growing up further. <laughs> And uh, and you left a word on the so, recyclability, and um, maybe oh, I will come back to you later yeah. on that uh, because oh, I right. have some ideas and I have to dig a, a little deeper because I am I'm very unprepared to to, to discuss that now. So. But I that's would... a very that's a very interesting topic, Peter. So yeah. that was one of the topic we didn't touch, but uh, uh, mm -hmm. there are some very interesting perspectives also from the European uh, Commission about recyclability, about circular economy, and the solution yeah. is definitely yeah. one of the yeah. enabler. It's a very yeah. very much serious aspect to be kept into yeah. account very much seriously nowadays. Yeah. So maybe we should leave that as a cliffhanger for uh, a second edition of uh, of a talk. All right, all right. So thank you very much. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> See you again. See you again. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.